Taco day, taco day. Hey, yo, Jake, it's taco day. What you doing, brother? You want, you want How's your day going? Oh, okay, I'd like it if you did. It'd be great. Okay. <laughs> this was never All right, my thing. It is Tuesday, <laughs> and it's time to get technical. What's going on, Justin? What's happening, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Are we late? I'm guessing we're late because Ten Chase, minutes. Chase was in charge of setting this one up. We had a good excuse though, okay? Uh, we should start a new hashtag. What's that? We want Josh. <laughs> want Josh. Wow. wow. Describe describe Josh. No, we nobody want knows. Josh. Describe it to everybody who Josh is Chase's replacement. Oh, oh no. Ah yes. Yeah. So we have two video guys. I've trained guys them well, the honestly. Two, two video guys here at the shop and Josh. He, uh, he trained you. Josh Let's be is real. doing uh <laughs> Josh is doing instructions right now, and Chase is doing feeds in some of the bigger videos. And I must say, Chase, Josh is killing it. He's the man. Yeah, you might you might really, really have to be concerned about really getting fired from this point forward. Honestly, you know, as long as I can leave you guys with my better half, I will, you know, it's, it's, it's all Honestly, good. if it gets you to shut up for, like, the whole feed, that's great. <laughs> so I got even more about Chase. I hate to, you know, degrade these discussions, especially on a Take Tech Tuesday. I said, hey, Chase, why don't you go get us a bunch of lunch so we don't, we don't have to leave. We could eat lunch before the feed. What does Chase do? Gets a ride to discount tire <laughs> so he can pick up his truck and then get food. Didn't even figure out anything to do with time. Gets back here late. We do the feed late and no one's even eating lunch, which makes me angry. Chase time. Actually, uh, hangry. Hangry. Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're all hangry thanks to Chase. Who would have ever thought discount tear taking a little bit to get all taken care of? And I like Anthony Valeza's comment here. Nah, keep Chase, Mitch. Look at that. Plan, uh, yeah. Pre-planning, Chase. Think yeah. about that thing called time. I know you have no idea what it's worth. I think so. Is a watch? Uh, I'll, I'll try. All right, so Tech Tuesday. It is uh, Sway Bar 101. Um, the reason we're doing this is because uh, we get a ton of questions still. We even have videos about it all over our, our YouTube. Oh, one of our oldest videos, Chase. Yes. That was uh, just us with a phone editing it together ourselves before there was a Chase. Was uh, Sway Bars. Hashtag um, BC before Chase. Before Chase. Uh, it was on a little airport runway and an XP with a couple Sway Bars and, a, and uh, some adjustments on a slalom. And that one, I don't know, it's like half a million views. It's been around many, many years, though. One of our most viewed videos, by the way. And we are in the middle of remaking it. And it's going to be a Chase-Josh combo. What do you think about those apples, Mitch? Mm, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what part is Chase doing? <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. So that means <laughs> half of it's going to be great. Yes. The 50. other half, not so much. <laughs> but uh, Sway Bars. Um, obviously, uh, mo the best way to call one of these or the right term would be an anti-sway bar. It stops sway or it stops body roll. That's what these are designed to do. Um, some people call them torsion bar. Uh, that's not 100% accurate, but it doesn't really matter. We kind of, everybody gets, gets it. We call them bars for short. So more bar, less bar. Do you have a bar? You got a front bar, you got a rear bar. That's what we, we go with. But the reason that sway bars are important on off-road uh, vehicles, especially on high speed, not so much for rock crawling as, as it is for desert or trail or dunes, is uh, they stop body roll and these UTVs have a ton of travel. The more travel you have, the more body roll typically you're going to get. Uh, if you got two, two feet of wheel travel, that's a lot of movement side to side. Um, and as these things get more powerful and more uh, traction, more tire, then they're going to hook in a corner and they're going to have body roll as they get into that corner. If it's got a nice uh, berm or tracked out, then uh, you can roll the car really easy. Matt. Uh, David Cron uh, wants to know, why do I see so many X3s running the dunes with no front sway bar? So um, the reason for that is when you're duning and you come up to a crest, something that's pointed like this, and you're transferring from one crest to the next and the car drops off into the next one, if you have a front sway bar connected, it holds the tire up a little bit. It doesn't let the tire fall off of this crest, touching the other side and, be, and becoming more of a smooth transition. If you've got a bar connected, usually the car will come off that and it'll fall over the other side. That's the only reason to pull a bar off in the dunes. Um, everywhere else while duning, every other corner that's not crested is faster if you have a front bar. 
and uh, we've done a lot of testing with that. You guys are smiling because something sounds like fun, right? Mitch. Mike Dubs is on here in the chat room. He's just, you know, killing it with the comments. Oh, he is said, he telling the truth about Chase? Yeah, he's, he said he'll buy me a case of beer and tacos if I kick Chase and... Uh, in the place, where yeah, but I have to do it on video. <laughs> Chase is definitely good with this. I think Talk he'll take it. Here. He'll take one for the team. Oh. <laughs> that was real. <laughs> Thank you, Mitch. May I have another? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mitch, good one. <laughs> Didn't hold back. Don't worry, guys. I got the camera. <laughs> Uh, not planned. By the way, we get that a lot too. Everybody asks uh, if we if we write this stuff down in advance or do a rehearsing. What the hell is rehearsing? <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Usually we don't, do we don't even know what we're going to talk about until Chase turns the camera on. So, no. I don't know how much beer and tacos that's worth, but it better be a lot, man. You know what? I would love to see that happen all day long. It doesn't hurt me a bit. It actually makes me happy. So back to bars. Uh, bars are going to stop body roll. Um, in the dunes, if you're transferring from a crest to crest sometimes no bar is a benefit but it's a negative everywhere else when you're doing so how do bars function sway bars the easiest way to do that is kind of let's uh say that this is bolted to the chassis all right these are the two frame mounts and this bar can cycle vertically up and down and that would be like a car going through the bumps flat and level okay this is not restricting any travel it's not hurting anything doesn't even have to be something that we tune for in shock setup as long as these are fairly easy to move. When the bar comes into play is when you're not going over things flat and level. When you come into a corner, let's say you're going to turn right and the car leans to the outside, what happens is one side of the bar is stationary and the other side is trying to be bent vertically. As the car leans, the suspension on the left side or outside of the turn gets lower, which tries to push the bar up. So this bar is trying to twist in the middle. Each end is in different locations, depending on how much body roll you've got. That twist from pre-bend or straight spot to straight spot is what you call rate or where you're gonna get the sway bar rate that is going to stop you from having that body roll that can cause you to roll a car real easy. Now, again, this does not affect anything if the car is flat and level over straight stuff. Jumping, whoops, that you might be going straight through, any, any kind of flat chop chatter, there's no effect. Um, where this is an effect is when you lean the car in a corner, or it can also be a big effect when you want wheel independence for rock crawling, and we'll go over that here shortly. But, since this bar is twisting, uh, the amount of twist or the amount of rate or the amount of stiffness that this bar has will directly affect how much body roll you have. So if the bar is small in diameter and longer, it's going to have a very low rate. Uh, let's just throw out, like say, 150 to 200 pound rate. That means you've got 150 to 200 pounds of resistance on the bar. And that's what's stopping that body roll. As the bar gets larger in diameter, there's more material in this straight spot. As you can take a look at a rear sway bar on an XP, much more uh, weight in the back of these cars uh, than there is in the front. And that's why rear bars tend to have a lot more meat on them because you want a lot more spring rate to stop the body roll where there's more weight in the vehicle. So obviously it's gonna be a lot harder to, to twist this thick one than it is to twist the small diameter material. And that weight means you get more rate and more body roll resistance. Uh, what do you got, Mitch? Uh, Alva asks, purchase your front and rear sway bar links, but use the stock sway bar. Is mm -hmm. that still good or question mark? So yes, it's good. Um, I'm gonna get into links and why they're good and bad and why they will help you. But to answer your question, yes. Better links are better uh, for all sway bar applications. Now that you have those and you know they're not gonna break because the factory ones tend to, uh, now you could actually go into a sway bar if you wanted to limit some of the body roll and it's really going to be a good effect because the links aren't going to fail and they're not going to squeak and they're not going to flex. So, sway bar diameter, the material itself, diameter of the material affects the rate. For instance, on this bar right here, uh, inch and a quarter diameter with this length of an arm, we'll go into that in a minute, you're looking at about 500 pound rate, spring rate on the back hole, 600 and 700 pounds, so almost 100 pounds change it's actually a little less it's about 10 percent it's like 50 65 and 70 pounds uh, increase between the holes and the more poundage or the more spring rate 
the less body roll you have. Now, we've got multiple bars for multiple vehicles. The size and shape of the bars are all dependent upon manufacturer, whether that's uh, Polaris, Can-Am, or anybody else. And uh, they're building a bar that fits the suspension design in the chassis. They have clearance issues that they have to get around. Um, this is a front bar on an X3, uh, Can-Am X3. It's a very short bar and it's mounted very narrow on right off the pivot points of the A-arms. And uh, whereas this is a bar off of a XP turbo, this bar is mounted on a much wider position on the arms. It's got a longer arm uh, than the Can-Am. These tend to have zero issues. Um, the X3s are well outside or very close to the design parameters engineering wise for a sway bar with the amount that they have to twist. There's a lot of load on this bar, a lot more load than there is in the Polaris design. And the Can-Ams tend to have link issues, failures on the links, um, shearing hardware because there's a ton of load on them. So a good set of links on the front of an X3 is a must. And a good sway bar on the front of an X3 is definitely a must. Mitch? Uh, SMP wants to know about the KRX. He said, does the KRX have lots of body roll? Um, the KRX has a lot of body roll due to shock setup and spring setup factory, but as you start changing spring rates and the body roll um, gets less. Um, but a KRX, in my opinion, is a good candidate for links because it will stiffen the system up and also an adjustable bar if you can buy one. The problem is I don't think that there's a bar available for the KRX yet, but we are in the middle of designing some parts for you. Matt. Uh, Andy wants to know, when is a bar too stiff? How do you balance body roll versus tip over? Okay, so um, bar tuning is very important. It's hard to describe. Um, that's why all of our bars are adjustable, so you can run them stiffer and softer depending on your driving style and or how much weight is in the vehicle. But typically, the more weight that you have in the car, the more sway bar is required to stop that extra weight from swinging around in a corner. Um, you know that you don't have enough sway bar in the car when you enter a corner and it just dives on the front outside corner of the car and it picks that back tire up off the ground. That extra body roll that's just um, compressing the front corner and, and extending the back corner, if you pick the tire up, it's not enough bar on that car. If you come into the same corner and you turn it, and the car stays flat and it just pushes straight through the corner, it doesn't hook the corner and, uh, and turn, then the pushing typically is a sign of too much sway bar, too much bar. It could be too much bar in the front, it could be too much bar in the back. That's where adjustability comes in. You can start changing the front, changing the rear, and find out where it likes to be, and you'll kind of hone in on it. But typically, turn the wheel and it doesn't turn, it pushes forward, it has no body roll, that's too much bar. And uh, turn in, it turns great, but it picks up the back tire and drops the nose, that's not enough bar. So there you go. We had uh, two questions for uh, <coughs> bars for the XP Pro and the Turbo S, which I got two of those questions too. Pretty excited because uh, we have what do you got there, something cool for the Pro coming. We, mm -hmm. we actually have all the parts here. We have them made. We mm -hmm. have to do the install video on them, um, which that same product is going to be used across the line for every single model to here soon. So yes. So once all of that and development and all the stuff for every other car comes, that will be released. So yes, there is something cool. I'm not going to say when it's going to come out. It is a new product that no one else has seen and we just received the patent on it so we can start um, finishing all of our design work and production and instructions and you guys will get, have this here soon. Done, done, done. done. Yeah. Yep, Matt. Uh, also, they want to know about a sway bar for the YXZ. Yes, I was going to get to that greatest car of all time. Justin, we got to know. So there's no sway bar available from us on the rear of a YXZ because we found that the factory sway bar is adequate for almost all use. Uh, but the front of that car needs one and we do have a bolt-on sway bar for a YXZ. On the website, you can go right now and get it. We have them in stock. I hope we have them in stock. Pretty sure we have them in stock. We'll have to check with Miss Lauren. Okay, but, but more than likely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have an off question here from Brad. He said, how often should we grease X3 wheel bearings? Uh, never. If you grease X3 wheel bearings, they will fail. Um, the X3 wheel bearing, we've done a ton of testing on them. Leave them factory. Do not gre add grease. If you add grease to that, they will run hotter and they will fail faster. Um, the best thing you can do is change them. Run them factory stock and replace them when they get too much play. That's basically what you want to do. Do not grease them. Just like the rod ends. Yes, I can tell you 
from personal experience because we did a lot of testing four years ago on bearing. It's a good question. Super awesome rocking dad. After you reset your ride height when almost two inches, is an upgraded sway bar recommended? Um, yeah, I mean, as soon as you raise the car, I mean, anytime you raise it, it's going to have more body roll. It's going to be a little bit more top heavy. The center of gravity has been raised. Typically, you're going to need more sway bar to control the body roll that you've gained. So a car sitting 10 inches off the ground is going to have less body roll or it's going to have less tendency to roll over at 10 inches than it does at 15 inches. It's going to have more tendency when it sits higher. So that's another reason to have bars behind you too, Chase. It's another reason to do aftermarket sway bar. When you start raising ride heights up to where they want to be, especially with spring kits, it's a help, it's a benefit. Um, and everybody's driving style is different. I know people that are plenty fast with no sway bar on the front of an X3. I know a lot of guys that are fast with sway bars on the front of an X3. Um, I know if you take the bar off the back of anything, X3, uh, Polaris, uh, Turbo S, doesn't matter, it's pretty much undrivable and you're going to wreck the car. Um, unless you're going 10 miles an hour over rock, there's just no reason to take one off. You guys should try it sometime. Uh, don't do it because I told you to, but just try it real slow and be careful not to wreck your car. You'll find out how much work a sway bar does for you when, it, when you lose the back one. That That's kind sure. that kind of answers Mike Dub's question. When running trails in AZ like boulders or up in Crown King, should the sway bar be removed or keep it on? Um, I would keep it on and um, I would leave the rear one on. You might disconnect the front if you're going to rock crawl all day long. Um, but I don't think I would take the rear one off ever because in, in Arizona, the worst rock trails are not slow. They're pretty much 20, 30 miles an hour all the time. I, I don't know where you're going to go that's 15 miles an hour all day long. I don't think it exists. It's a pretty popular question with the uh, Walker Evans links. Are you able to run them with our sway bar? Yes. So here's how a Walker Evans link works. Um, it is a miniature shock absorber. It has about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of movement in the link before it becomes fully solid. Um, that movement in the link is, let's just say it's three quarters of an inch. Well, that's three quarters of an inch that the sway bar does not work until the car leans enough to take up that gap on the link. And then once the link becomes solid, then the sway bar starts to work. Now, those are awesome in rock crawling, rough trail, super slow situations. If you are desert racing or play car or in the dunes, walker links are going to add a ton of body roll and you're gonna have to learn how to drive the car again and the thing's gonna be tipping excessively around corners. So maybe not the best application for those, but if you're slow trail rock crawling, then a walker link is a good idea. If you have too much body roll with walker links, take one off, put a solid link on it and run one link. That'll eliminate half the body roll that a walker link gives you. What do you got? <laughs> it is that time of the day. Uh, we wanna know. Mike Dubs, Speed UTV bars. Sorry, Justin had to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Tell Robbie um, how much these bars are going to do for the Speed yeah. UTV. <laughs> um, so I don't know anything about the uh, Speed UTV bars. I got the same question. So. Yeah. I'm um, <laughs> sorry. So uh, until we get a car in our hands and we get to drive it, I can't give you any information or personal experience about that car or its way of bars one way or the other. Robbie, send us a car. We have questions that need to be answered. Yeah, the, the only car might be through town at some point we get to drive it, but he's busy and so are they testing. Mega had a good question. Uh, grease the bushings or not? He prefers not due to the dust buildup. Um, I think that grease is a must on most bushings. Um, the factory ones are greased factory. Um, the bushings that we run are stiffer, so there's less play in the bushing when you use it, which makes the bar work better. Um, we do grease them as well. Typically, if you're greasing the bushing enough, say like one or two squirts every three to 500 miles, then the grease itself pushes any dirt out and keeps dust from coming in. It's a, basically a sealed barrier of grease if you do it right. So I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I definitely would be greasing bushings, not rod ends, but that's it. What do you got, Matt? Uh, Mike Thomas wants to know, any thoughts on an electronic sway bar disconnect? Um, I think they're a great idea. There's a couple of them on the market, but um, I have never driven one, so I can't tell you if they lock or unlock really easy or not. I think electronic systems are awesome. Um, we have one in development as well. It's probably a, a year out, but um, electronic systems are the way to go, in my opinion. 
Um, back to bar science. So diameter of bar gives you a certain rate. Thicker is stiffer, which is less, less body roll. Smaller diameter gives you more body roll. Another factor is length of the arm on the end of these, depending on how long they are, also changes the rate. So let's just say that these two are the same diameter material. They're actually not, but let's just pretend that they are. This bar with a shorter arm on it is going to be stiffer or have more spring rate and less body roll than this bar because it's got about twice as long of an arm on it. The longer the arm, the more leverage on the, on the bar, the softer the system is. So this bar on the vehicle will act softer than this bar on the vehicle. That is leading into the adjustability. So Chase, if you can show these, most of our bars are very adjustable, at least three holes. And the farther away the hole that you use is away from the pivot point of the bar, the softer the bar, the more body roll you have. The closer that you uh, move a link, so obviously links, links attach here, the closer you move a link to the pivot point, the stiffer the bar gets, the less body roll you have. That is, uh, uh, there's some formulas to that for that to figure out what you have. I'm not gonna bore you with the math, but uh, trust me, the farther forward you get, the stiffer it gets, Matt. I'm just, my are experience you, with it. <laughs> your, your experience with uh, stiffer? Or, yeah, I or, went stiffer and it was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> so stiffer sway bars are not always good. Softer sway bars are not always good. It's a tuning thing that has to fit all of what you have. Uh, the weight in the vehicle, how fast you're driving it, where you are. You don't want as much sway bar when you're rock crawling. You want a little bit more bar when you're, when you're in desert racing. You want a whole lot more bar in the dunes because you have a lot of traction in the dunes when you hook the corner and you dig in with a sand tire. So usually the most sway bar that you're ever gonna want is in the sand dunes. Uh, next to that's gonna be racing with a heavy car. And after that, then it's gonna get a little softer for play cars and a lot softer, if not no bar, on rock crawling because you want independence. Um, next, overall width makes a difference. The wider the bar, the softer it is. The narrower the bar, the stiffer it is. Um, arm length, we talked about that. The longer the arm, the softer the bar is, the more body roll you get. Uh, material does make a difference. Better material twists less. Um, better material can twist farther without breaking. And that's actually a, a good one that we need to talk about. People ask us all the time why we run a solid bar versus a hollow bar with splines and a, a bolt-on arm. The reason is, Hollow bars have a shelf life. They will only cycle a certain amount of times. So let's just say it's uh, one million times and the bar fails. A solid bar can have six, seven, eight times more cycle time. So a solid bar versus a, a hollow bar, the solid bar will always last longer. Even if they're the same rate, identical, it might go seven or eight million cycles before it fails. So we run a solid bar for longevity so our customers don't have failures. Also, a splined bar where the arm bolts onto it, the splines are a weak spot on the arm. If it's an aluminum arm, typically you're gonna strip the splines out over time. Maybe six months, a year, a year and six months, just depends. But those are throwaway items on race cars. They get swapped out every year or two before they fail. So we don't want those failures with our customers buying bars. We want bars that are gonna last the lifetime of the car, if not longer. So we run a solid bar that's one piece, and pressed on the ends. Now, a hollow bar, bolted on, billet arms, looks bitchin', and we can certainly make them. And for visual, that's awesome, but they just don't last. They also don't twist as far. A hollow bar has a certain amount of twist to it. All the diameters and thick wall thickness plays into effect. Let's just say it can twist 90 degrees and not fail and come back. Well, a solid bar, if a, if a uh, hollow bar goes 90 degrees, a solid bar will go 120 before it fails. So you can stuff the front of the car into the base of a G out of a dune, crooked, and run the right side tire all the way up past fender and the left side tire all the way out. And with a solid bar, not break it. With a splined hollow bar, you can snap it. It just depends on how far you twisted it and which car and the design and geometry, all that kind of good stuff. Engineering, weird, math. Basically, I just say math. 
I love the I conversations love. that happen in our comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, they before, have all. It's amazing. Well, what kind of good stuff you got? <laughs> I was gonna say we gotta be watching out for Frank G. Yeah, Frank, according, Frank G's in the house. According uh, to the to the comments, in. Josh and I both have to look out for Frank G. It looks like everyone wants to yeah. see more instructionals from Frank G. A yeah, big shout out to him though. He does do some pretty awesome videos for for all that stuff. So thank you, Frank G. Yes. So. Um, Things that affect bar selection, uh, the heavier the car is, the more sway bar you're gonna need to stop body roll. The higher the weight is on the car, like a luggage rack, the more you're gonna want more sway bar on it to stop body roll. The lighter the car, the less bar you can run. The lighter the bar can be and still stop body roll. Um, terrain, rock crawling, you want less bar. Desert and dunes, you want more bar. Um, the faster you drive and the more rutted and bermed the course is you're racing or driving, the trails you're driving, the more bar you're gonna want because the car can get up against the berm and pinch over and you might need more bar to stop that. So these things are tunable. They are tunable to your driving style, your vehicle, the weight and where you drive. Um, that's why they're adjustable. So um, try not to buy any sway bars that have one hole in them. Um, you're kind of be pigeon pigeonholed into what they think is good may not be what you need as a driver. So Matt. Uh, Robert Campbell wanted to know, uh, he runs uh, our, the rear sway bar for Rally Glass Best of the Desert, mm -hmm. and last race he managed to shear off both bolts, Okay. and he's wondering any thoughts on that. Yep. I had a thought. Um, he was a little I, yep. nervous because I started behind him. <laughs> <laughs> so he was pushing the car. Until pushing the car it. to keep from getting hit or rolled over on <laughs> <laughs> He didn't want to. He didn't want to have horny tires with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the only way you shear a bolt is if the bolt became loose or if the link is on the wrong side of the sway bar. So uh, let's say that the link needs to be on the outside of the bar. I don't know what car you have. It's an, if it's an XP one thousand. XP one thousand. Are they on the inside or the outside of the rear bar? I forget. Uh, well, it's on the inside. Well, X, yeah, no, because XP turbos are outside, XP 1000s are inside. So okay, so here's here's the thing, and also the 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 long travel kit that you have depending on whose it is and what trailing arm you have, they might have moved the link location width-wise, and sometimes we've seen that. And what happens is, um, if, if the bar is here, and the link should be lined up vertically like that, okay, and it cycles perfectly like this, well, if the, if the long travel kit moved the arm, arm mount out and you still have it on the inside, it might bind the spacer and shear the bolts. You might have to cycle the car and put it on the outside maybe to make sure that it's gonna have no clearance problems. That's the only way bolts break is if it goes into bind. So you double check that. Keyword cycle. Cycle the suspension so you know if it went into bind. That's the only time bolts break. Trust me, that's it. Uh, Bryce Beckman, for front of the car, does a good sway bar eliminate the need for limit straps, vice versa? No, sway bars do not limit overall wheel travel. They will not stop an extension clunk. Um, they will not. They only help body roll, which can be corner entry, exit, and overall angle of the vehicle in a corner. Uh, Eric Murphy wants to know, what bar adjustment would you run in Parker with the ruts and Osborne Wash? Um, it depends on what bar you have on the car and what car you have. He's got the X3. Oh, this, the same one you're talking about? No, no, this is a different guy, but it's an X3. X3. Yeah, I know. Um, so in the rear, I'd run it in the center hole. Uh, in the front, I would run it in the middle or center hole as well or the front. So X3, if you have one of our bars, run it in the front hole or run it in the middle hole. One or the other. In the rear, I'd run it right in the middle. That's gonna be a good spot for all the race cars in, the, in that wash. So Matt, it's my understanding that sway bars help with body roll and rolling the car. My question is, what setting do you use and do you have sway bars on your car? <laughs> that was good. I do, I do. Um, they work great right now. My rear looks like this. <laughs> you should just ask Chase if he put on deodorant today. Hey, don't worry. I, I did. There was a comment about your armpits being completely disgusting, which I... Uh, yeah, brown. Yeah. He has a black shirt on today. Look, I bought new undershirts, people, and I put on deodorant. I came prepared today. Oh, wow, crusty. Which guy, Mitch? What is the warranty on all of our sway bars and things? Sway bars are lifetime. Even though sway bars have a shelf life, the shelf life of our bar is longer and um, longer than most cars' lives. So it's lifetime. If you can break one, then we'll give you a freebie. V Racing Products, keep up the good work, guys. <coughs> Thanks again for the knowledge. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, anything else on, uh, on this? So links, a lot of people ask stuff about links. 
Okay, <laughs> links, here's view. The important thing about links is that you have a good rod end, upper and lower. We did a rod end video just about three or four videos ago, so go back and check out what, what makes a good one and a bad one. But you gotta have good, large rods to make sure you do not have any failures, you don't have any movement, and you don't have any squeaks. These are a culprit for hmm. squeaking big time because everybody sells links with really crappy rod ends. Size and quality matters, people. It does, especially in this case. Now, sometimes the factory link uses a, a flexible bushing on the top and the bottom. That bushing, when it moves, adds body roll to your vehicle. So just by buying good solid link like this, you can eliminate a lot of body roll on certain vehicles. Not every one of them, because like an X3 has a good movable link, it doesn't have much movement in it, but some of the early XPs have a rubber bushing and they have a ton of movement in them. So a link will help a lot on the earlier vehicles and a little less on the newer stuff. Um, also, last I think is, uh, is driving style, you guys. If you drive harder, you're gonna probably want more bar. If you drive harder, you have a, sh a stiffer shock setup. If you drive harder, you're gonna have more spring. All of which are gonna stop some body roll on their own. You may have to add some more bar as well. It just depends, we got that. Uh, Chris wants to know, should the rod end be super stiff? Always. <laughs> <clears throat> we want the stiffest rod ends that you can possibly get. And uh, you can ask her about that too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, there's another question from 0311. Do you make mm -hmm. Turbo S four seater sway bars? Not yet. There's nope. something cool coming out for them here relatively soon, though. So. Yes. They had another one for you too, Mitchy boy. Me? KMX limit straps. Uh, we're still trying to figure out the clamp on that one. It's. Do the mic? Yeah, yeah. It's just hidden. It's high. Oh, yeah, okay. It's cool. taped, taped down there somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. um, no, we're still still trying to figure out the clamp for that one. It's uh, totally a redesign of everything because it's it's <laughs> it's super tight to get them onto the front of the shock. So bear with us. We're we're working oh, on it. Right. Um, I, I'm not or don't have a time frame on it yet, but we are working on it. So. I got, um, have questions about uh, sway bar for the Talon and uh, also the General. I'd say general no, not yet. Yeah, general is a no at the moment. Talon is in process and it will be available at the same time that we release this new product in, uh, I don't know, a month or so. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, yes. yes, absolutely. What else can we talk about? I'm done talking about bars and links. I got a good question for Matt question. here. Matt, Anthony Velez, best place to race for a beginner. <laughs> Wanting to get into racing, where should he go? Uh, AZOP is a yeah, great series. Um, yeah, if you're, in, if you're in Arizona. Yeah. Um, how about California? California, uh, DP4. What about the East Coast? What if he's coming all the way out there from New York? Pro Rock Series. There you ah, go. Matt, you get around. You know all the cool places to race. AXCC, um, <laughs> there's a couple of them. I was gonna say you get around, Matt, but you roll around, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Matt? Is it your turn to kick him in the nuts? That, they already suggested more tacos it. Than hey, they it? already suggested hey, it. No one's threatened them for me to lose my job, so I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. You got any other cool questions, Mitch? Otherwise, uh, uh, C, yeah, sorry. C Shop 702. Can I run the Turbo S link on a Razor Pro? No, they are different links. It's much longer on the Pro, which we have them. We have to promote them still and put them on the website. Really? Yep. Okay, so uh, we need to mark that down. Yep. Um, but we do have links. If you call the guys in the front, they'll get you something for a Pro. Uh, Mike Dub said he'll buy more tacos and beer if uh, Matt punches Chase in the Chase I don't know if I, hey, I, I, at the end of the feed here, but before we get to the grand finale here, Rich Fortin has a serious question that I like. Okay. Specifically for rear bars, could you move the lower mounting point to change characteristics? Um, when you say lower mounting point, do you mean the lower mounting point of the link on the trailing arm, or do you mean the mounting point for the pivot? Me know what you're what you're talking about there because uh the answer is yes it will change the characteristics if it is a link mount on the arm that you're moving if you move the link rearward on the arm closer to the tire then it's going to be softer no it's actually he said of the link of the link um as you go rearward rearward, rearward, <laughs> rearward. on the lower link mount um, the effect of the bar on the car will be as if the bar is stiffer. It will limit body roll. As you move the link forward on the arm towards the pivot point of the frame mount, the arm has more leverage against the bar and it will act like a softer bar, add body roll, more body roll. But 
that is a very small change. Um, it's a bigger change to move it on the sway bar. You're going to get a lot bigger noticeable thing, noticeable change out of it. Uh, changing it on the arm is actually much less of a change and you're not going to notice much. It's also harder. Science. Science. And math. 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 Yeah, math. part of that whole <laughs> math thing. Weird. Uh, GB Parker, front or rear front or rear sway bar first. We get that question a lot. Maybe it depends go. on the vehicle. So um, I think you should do a front bar on an X3 right away. Uh, it really squares the car up and balances it in a corner. Uh, if you've got an XP Turbo, it already has a front and a rear bar. It's fairly balanced, but if you add weight to the car and drive harder, you're going to want more bar front and rear. Uh, but equally, I wouldn't do one over the other anytime soon. Um, a YXZ, Chase's favorite, it needs a front bar. It doesn't need more rear bar, just a front. So there's a couple of choices for you. Uh, Michael Smiley Durham, Dern. See you guys in May to drop off my 19 XP4 1000. Are there different links for the front sway bar? I don't really know what he means by different links, but we have links for that car, if that's what he means. Maybe different um, styles? And we have our aftermarket set, so there's a, something similar. I mean, this is for a DS, um, but we do have front links for that vehicle, and I would suggest uh, front links on every one of them, because that tends to be the weakest one, pretty much on every model. So I think we're good. And you know what that means, Chase? Hey, it's taco time. It is taco time. We are actually going to have to sign off here because you guys have no more questions. That means we get to... Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. Ready. I'm actually... I'm shooting myself right now. Oh, damn. So uh, <laughs> Matt already hit him in the nuts. <laughs> All right. But we didn't capture it, which means it didn't happen. Not going to be in every feed tank, okay, people? Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I like tacos. I like beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. Check your hand for uh, deodorant. Oh. <laughs> Cleaner. A lot more than deodorant, sir. <laughs> All right. You guys, thank you very much for tuning in for Tech Tuesday. It's a little sway bar science. And uh, if you guys got questions, then uh, leave them in the feed. We'll answer it. And if you don't, but you want to talk about other products, then uh, just give us a call. 623-217. 4959 and if you know what you want like say sway bars or links then go to straight to our website shoptherapist.com you can buy everything there and we'll get it shipped to you in a couple of days you guys are shipping are still 300 orders behind and they're doing their best to catch up and we are hiring people as we speak so the wait times are going down thank you guys for being patient have a killer week rich Ford and i do agree no balls they used to call me big balls <coughs> surprise us <laughs>